bottom line. If you don't have enough to bring into the top line, you still have to pay the bills and you still have to pay the payroll and there's people's lives that you're affecting. And so when I came back to what would be viewed as a much bigger environment, um, I, was, I think I was more sensitive to that individual unit owner that was paying the bills. Any other questions? Yeah. You said your, your first job working at the, the hotel was your favorite. You're serious about that. Like, like, where you're at right now, <laughs> well, you wouldn't rather be there and you know, have you know, all that time. Yeah. All that money. I, so I look, <laughs> look, the more money you make, the more you spend. That's a lesson. I'm sure they're teaching you that in accounting, right? You just have more responsibility. I have two kids, right? Um, it's, you have it all. I have it all. It's wonderful. Look, I have a great life, right? I love my life. I have a wonderful life. I get to do things like this, right? This is wonderful. My day is not all standing on stages and presenting. Most of my day is about answering to owners on their return on their investment, which I love to do as well. Um, but what I just, when I think about that job, when I think about that experience, look, I have that passion for the hospitality business. It's in me, right? You either kind of love the business or you don't love the business. You're either, you know, if people, if you don't like serving people, then it's not the business for you. It's at the core of who I am. And when I think about those days of, you know, Mr. Smith coming in and checking in and the 3 to 11 clerk that I was, that it just, it, it made me so happy and so excited to know that I was impacting an individual person's life. It's, it's how I feel when I walk into a hotel today. It's when I walked into, not staying at one of our hotels um, while I'm here, but staying in um, the Waterfront Place Hotel. I, I just, I love it. I loved t t talking to the, the 3 to 11 desk clerk because he, he was impacting my day. Right? Had, had he not been friendly, had my key not worked, had he not had my reservation, had he not reminded me what floor I was on and there was water down the hall, that made a difference for me. He did everything right and it made a difference for me. By the time I got to my room, I had everything I needed. I had that bottle of water because I was quite thirsty. Um, and so it's, I just, when, when, you, when I think back to those days in that job, it just really warms my heart. I loved it, right? Could I go, your question is, would I give it all up today and go back to that job? Probably not, because as you farther, more money you make, the more stuff you buy, and the more people you have to pay. That's just how it works, uh -huh. yeah. But the like, feeling, the enjoyment you get grows as you advance? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, for me now, right, I don't have that everyday interaction with a, an individual customer, right? I'm in a different place in my career, but I get a lot of that fulfillment from an owner who's decided to buy our brands that we can show his, his or her return on investment. So whether they're happy or not happy and we're sorting something out and making sure, right, I get that feeling. Right, of, of resolving problem resolution and, and making them happy. Um, I get that feeling from leading and developing people. Right? When I see I've just recently promoted two of my manager level people to director level um, that I've known for about four years, that's an incredible feeling about leading and developing people. When you see people around you start to develop, that you've developed them, that really starts to make you feel like your work has been well worth the work. So my kids are 16 months apart, and Evan will be four in June, and Sarah is t was just turned two in October. So if you know anything about children, which I knew nothing about children until I held my own children. I'm really just trying to keep them from killing each other right now. <laughs> so I mean, they're they're pretty much. I, that is a lot. I'm a referee. My husband and I are referees. Um, but in, in their own way, the lessons that my husband and I are, ch we want them to be individuals, right? So there's all this pressure on, you know, is your, my son's in soccer, right? He's three. He's three and a half. He's in soccer, right? I don't, I don't even know what that looks like in soccer but you know and the other kids are off and, and they're practicing on the weekends and they've, they're starting them to go to other leagues and my husband and I just made a decision we said look he's three right I don't we don't want him to do that all weekend if he wants to then we would do it but we want them to be individuals we want them to do what they what makes them happy and so um, what one of the the nicest things somebody told me when when my first child was just a baby was that how well, your your child is, is so well behaved I don't know about that, but at the time seemed well behaved. And they said, you must be meeting his needs, 
right? So that's one of the highest compliments that you can give to a parent to say you must be meeting his needs. And to me, what that translates to is that I, I, I know, I, I listen to him. I watch his body language. And I'm not trying to make him me. I'm not trying to make my daughter me or my, my husband. We're not trying to force who we are. We're trying to draw at the best of them and let them be individuals. Thank you for the question. I love to talk about my children. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great question. So the question was, I seem to have a lot of years left in my career. Um, what's the next step for me? So um, that's another wonderful comment. It means you're saying I'm young. Um, so, you know, it's a great question because I, um, I'm in a place in my career where I, I get to work in the hospitality business, the hotel business, which I love. I get to work in the distribution landscape, which is fascinating to me, right? There's people way smarter than me um, running the, the, the pipes of the distribution landscape. Um, but I, I, I think for me, one of the next steps will either continue in a generalist role. So I'm, in a, I'm, I'm sort of a generalist across a long landscape, right? I can interface with owners and I can talk about their entire landscape of their business, everything from a sales call to an online travel agency reservation to direct bookings to cost to sale uh, to operations. And so I seem to do quite well in, in that space. Um, but I do think about would I be well served to take a path in a very specific functional role? Maybe I run the web, right? Is that a place that I want to be so that I grow? What, I, I don't know definitively what the next step for me will be, but I do know that the next step for me will always remain at this stage in my career leading and developing teams, right? Because I, I love that. That's what really drives me, and that's what, to me, is, is, is one of the things that the reason why I get up every day is to make other people successful and, and make them find their true potential. Thank you very much, Lara. Thank you very much uh, for you know to Lara for coming and uh, Lara for joining us, and uh, uh, we're planning to have still this. Uh, mm, let me see, one or more two speakers, in fact, uh, this uh, semester, and for those uh, of you uh, still with us uh, in in the fall. We have, we're lining up some very interesting speakers also. And so the whole purpose here is to put in front of you people who have, uh, uh, some of them, or most of them in fact, have uh, gone to WVU and who, ha who can share with you experiences of their lives and their careers and uh, just to challenge you and perhaps give you ideas as how, uh, one thing that she did, did uh, Lara did mention, which is I think is very critical uh, in anyone's career is uh, find your passion. Whatever that passion is, you're going to love it. But it's hard to do it. And it may take some tries. And uh, trial and error, uh, you, know, you, don't have, you, you cannot afford to do too many of them, but you will in, their, in your career. And as you can also see in her career path, she has changed jobs. Uh, back uh, 30 years ago, uh, that would not happen. You would stay with a company for 35 years, 40 years. I changed myself, uh, my ch myself too, but I changed job three times. And so you have to be prepared to change jobs. And in my case, I was changing jobs because I was looking for growth. I, will, I was looking for greater responsibility. I wanted to be marketing. I wanted to be an international. And I wanted to be a general manager. I wanted to run a business. So those three, uh, those three things drove me to change jobs eventually. And eventually, some, some of that's going to happen to you too. But I think to find your passion and dedicate yourself fully is going to be critical for your success. So thank you very much for coming. And I think we have some uh, refreshments. Uh, and you can also... Uh, I think uh, Lara is going to be available for more questions you may have. And uh, do think uh, Intercontinental. For those of you particularly interested in uh, hospitality, it was so I didn't realize that Intercontinental was founded by Pan American Airway, uh, <laughs> Airlines. Pan American, uh, 40 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, used to be the premier uh, international airline. And so they founded the Intercontinental brand, which I think is great. So thank you very much for coming, and uh, uh, in, enjoy uh, the next uh, few minutes if you can spend some time with Lara. Thank you.